together. Are you alright? Have you had a good day? Yeah? I'm just curious. All the sexuality. Well, the, the Bible has ten commandments. Don't lie, don't steal. Don't commit adultery. I'll just stop at McDonald's. Yeah. So, so the Bible uh, talks about that. Any ma any sex outside of a marriage of a man and woman is sin. But Christ died for all, whatever your sexuality. You know, and we're not defined at first by our sexual identity or whether we're a man or woman first. We're ident our identity is in Christ first. So I would I would say that society is going the wrong way about it. That we we have to identify who we are in Christ. The Bible says we're new creatures in Christ. So now there's a lady called uh, Rosary Butterfield. She was a lesbian. She was a professor in gay theory. And Christians came to the campus and were preaching and she hated it. You're homophobic. So she wrote to them and when she wrote, wrote to the minister, the minister said, why don't you come and talk to me? So she went to the house and talked to him and she found that he wasn't as judgmental as he thought she thought he, what he, thought she, she thought he was going to be. And then she asked it, he asked her, can you give me arguments to defend your lesbianism? She's a professor in it and she couldn't give any arguments for it. And he gave arguments for Christianity, and now she, she's, a, she's a married to a guy with kids. And I've told that story to lesbians, and they say, oh, she was bisexual. But in her story, she definitely says she was a lesbian. And she came to know the Lord Jesus, and now she's written books, and she lectures and debates people arguing for Christianity. Uh, well, if you so mean, do, you, do you think that okay. there is no such as no way that people can be homosexual? Well, my, my sister's a lesbian. But no, your friends? No, okay. <laughs> my, my sister's a lesbian, so I, you know, so I have to deal with this. So I can't, I can't deal with it as an atheist, or I can't even give my opinion. As a preacher, my job is to just preach the Bible. So, you, you tell me what the Bible says here. It says, wherefore God, he's talking about nature, creation, tells people there's a God. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God unto an image like corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship the, and serve the create creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even the woman did change the natural use to that which is against nature yeah, 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 yeah. and likewise also men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in the lust one towards another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was me now rosary butterfield rosaria butterfield read that this was what converted her from lesbianism to being a christian because what she noticed when she read this chapter you read the chapter carefully Paul doesn't home in on gay and lesbians straight away. He absolutely he, he, he homes in ev on everybody else, and that's what really convicted her because she's always thought people are homophobic and just picking on gay and lesbian people. And Paul wasn't doing that. He was talking about other people, and then he talked about gay and lesbian issue. So what he's saying here in Romans that people know that there's a God through creation and their conscience, but they reject it. So God says, okay, you reject it, you go your way. And because people go their own way, they lose their moral compass according to Romans 1. And that's why they don't understand their identity. And they become, uh, you know, lesbian or gay. And, and that's God giving over the society to what they want and saying, if you want to do that, you go and do it. You know? But there's redemption for all of us, whatever our sexuality, that Christ died for us and redeemed us. And, 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 and can work in us and, and we all have our issues, we all have our challenges but God can come into our lives, forgive us 
and changes, you know. We talked today, didn't we? And it was really nice and it was great talking to you. But, you know, one day we're going to die. And if there's a fire, if there was a fire in a house and you're in there and you couldn't get out because you, you fell and I was outside and I could see the fire, you would want me to run in and jump in and help you. But what if, what if somebody turned around and said, don't go to the fire? And I said, why? It's politically correct not to go to the fire and help. I said, oh, I've got to listen to political correctness. But my friend is going to burn in the fire. I need to go and help. So we have political correctness that says homophobia and all the rest of it. But the Bible trumps political correctness. And it tells you there's a fire, a judgment there. And Christ has paid your debt. So who are you going to listen to? Political correctness? Or is there a fire? And has God paved the way for you? You know? And I don't, everybody's got their own issues, their own challenges. I don't think it's right to demonize any individual group or group or you know, demonize groups. You know, you have to talk, talk to people on an individual basis. In every group, you'll find people who are not nice in every group, whether it be atheist, gay, Christian, whatever. You always find a nasty element in, in each group, but you can't demonize all groups because you, you've got to treat people on an individual level, treat them how you would be treated. But it doesn't mean to say that you have to hide and pretend that there aren't differences. There's a big difference between the Bible and modern culture and gay rights. The Bible is squarely against it and there's going to be conflict. And um, so, are we going to be men or are we going to be mouse? Are we going to bow to political correctness and they're going to say, you're homophobic? Or are we going to be men and women and say, well, I'm following the Bible? And, and that's what we share. I hope that's been really helpful to you. I've been trying to be honest with you. I was just curious what you were saying to that. So what, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Well, <laughs> since I'm uh, bisexual myself, yes, yes. I'm, well, what I think about everything, about being gay, about being lesbian, about believing in every religion, everyone should do and believe what they want. Yeah. What they feel like is right as long as they don't hurt every, anyone else. Yeah, yeah. As long as they're true to themselves and don't hurt anyone. That's what push I their opinions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or push their opinions to others. Because as long as I as I don't believe in God, I don't, I'm not a Christian, but I respect everyone who believes in that. Yeah. And I don't want to hurt anyone like that. I try to, I mean... <laughs> I yeah, hope I yeah, never yeah, hurt anyone yeah. like that. I will never hurt anyone like that. And I understand your opinion on that. I respect that. Maybe we don't have the same opinion. So that's... It would be... That's life. Yeah, that's life. <laughs> it would be kind of sad if everyone had the same opinion on, on everything. That would be kind of boring. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I think that one of the things uh, for me is, um, you know, if you've got a little boy or a little girl and they've been abused and they've been, they've had a terrible life and they're just lost and they just don't know where, who they are, and then one day the little boy gets adopted to a rich family, a millionaire, and and then that father. He's a great scientist and the mother's a great pianist and the little boy grows up with an identity. He knows who he is now, right? And God wants us to have an identity. And that identity is to know who we are in Christ. And when we find that identity, then we really know who we are. Then our sexuality slots into place. But until we find that real identity of who we are in Christ, then we're kind of like that little boy. We, we kind of like lost. We, we try to, we, we kind of reach out for different things. But until we've been adopted and until we have that home where we know that, that we have that real identity and, and discover who we really are. And I'm just saying to you that Christ wants you to have a, an identity that makes everything fall into place. And it begins with love. That all the issues that we have, a lot of it, is because we're crying out for love. 
But the greatest love that you could ever know is that Christ came and died for you. And he wants you to know that love. And once you know that love and tasted of that love that he died for you, then all the other issues will fall into place. Then you really know who you are. You know, and there's always things picking our head, things in our minds, negative thoughts, people who've been negative to us in the past. Even when we're very, very positive, we still peck our heads with negativity. And it's attacking our identity and we get down with it, people's negativity to us. But once we, we come to Christ, he says there is, you remember that, I, I said it earlier today, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. But once you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. That you know that you're right with your Father, and then he begins to work inside you and, and help you to reorientate and that you know that your identity, so that nobody can peck your head and you can't peck your head anymore. You know how we torture ourselves, pecking our head and asking questions and stuff. And we can find that peace in our life. And then we can work it out where we can show love to other people. So for example, you know, that love is like wanting to treat other people the way you want to be treated. So if you allow Christ to change you and allow Christ, then you can have relationships with people that's going to bless them rather than take advantage of them. Because you, once you know who you are and securing yourself, then you can help other people. But if you're not securing yourself, you're just going to abuse other people, even though you might not realise it. Because because you're you've got issues and you put your issues onto other people. Once you get a sense of who you are in Christ, things slowly begin to fall into place, you know. And that's what we're sharing today: that Christ died for you, He loved you, he died for you. And if you trust Him, you'll you'll know a love and a peace in your life, you know. And, and I'm not saying it'll be easy, right? Do you know how many Christians are, uh, are killed every year? Tens of thousands of Christians that die as martyrs every year. So if you become a Christian in this country, number one thing that you'll be called is a Bible basher. Right? So it's not easy being a Christian, right? And also people will say, oh, you don't have to follow the Bible. And you can interpret it the way you want. You know, it, it does teach about gay lifestyle. Some people try to change it that way. Some people try to tell you that you shouldn't preach the gospel. And if you go and be a, a missionary to a foreign country, you might lose your life. So being a Christian isn't a crutch. It's not hiding from life. You have to be a real man and woman to stand up for Jesus. So it costs Christ everything, but he doesn't give it cheap. He wants you to give your life to him and lay your life for him. You know, you're, you're young people and you're lovely young people, but you've got a life ahead of you, you know, and God has a plan for you. But are you going to walk in that plan, let him work in you? Let him deal with the issues in your life. I've got issues, we all have issues. There's not one person on this planet that doesn't have an issue. <laughs> if the person says that they don't have an issue, that's an issue itself. It's called pride. We all have issues. Even the most holiest person on the planet has an issue. And, and God's molding us slowly but surely and changing us. And if you trust Christ, I can guarantee in 10 years time, if I see you, you you'd have changed for the better. If you let me change. Does that make sense? So, I would just encourage you to trust Jesus. And trust Him as your Lord and Savior. Do you want to do that? Think what do you think about it? I don't want to say yes, I will do it because I'm not sure about it and I don't want to make any promises to say. Yeah, just let it sink and think sink. about it. And, and I don't know. Are you, are you on holiday? Yeah. <laughs> You're on holiday. Well, it's good to see you guys and, uh, you know, God bless you. And, uh, you know, you can keep in touch if you, want my, if you want my email or something, you know, if you wanted to keep in touch. But I'll be praying for you and I hope you have a lovely holiday. And I hope you come to that decision of knowing Jesus. God bless you. God bless you.